Well, we're back with Dr. Sharon McCullum, principal of the Ivana Udorican High School. During our conversation, we touched bases on some of the wonderful things that are going to be taking place at Ivana Udorican High School, and I want us to take this opportunity to allow Dr. McCullum to specifically guide us through the process in terms of what are the positive things that are going on. A lot of times when we pick up a newspaper, you read all the negative impacts that are taking place, all the bad things that are taking place in schools, and little is pretty much given attention to some of the great things. And we want to afford the opportunity to Dr. McCollum to embrace our community and be able to share in terms of what's going on, what are some of the wonderful programs that are keeping our students engaged at the Ivana Udorican High School. Schools um, have to be positive places, and I agree with you. I think often too much is given in the, by the media to the negative, and not enough to the positive. Ivana Eudora Ken has a myriad of wonderful activities going on. We have one of the largest JROTC programs in the territory. Presently, we have 275 students in JROTC. They um, are the flagship of the school. Mm -hmm. I like to give them that term. When they move, they move in force, they move in numbers. They represented the school wonderfully in the Veterans Day Parade. Uh, continually are called on to provide honor guard services and um, to do the uh, flag ceremonies. They um, also have been going to all of the elementary schools that we service on the east end of the island, teaching the children how to handle the flags, how to put them up and take them down. The music department, I am just ecstatic about that. Um, Let's talk about that. <laughs> yeah, I was a music student myself when I was in high school, and I uh, was in the marching band. So to see those kids out there with the drums and everything, yeah. I want to get out there and move with them, but um, I don't think I can do it <laughs> quite well. But nevertheless, um, our Teacher of the Year for Ivana Eudora Ken is Ms. Dion Donadell, our band director, and I'd like to um, give some kudos to her for the wonderful work that she is doing. When she came on board, she had maybe 15, 20 students, and now it has grown to about 75 students in the marching band. She is the one who gave birth to the idea of the Battle of the Bands that mm -hmm. I know the entire community knows about. And we will be coming back with Battle of the Bands again this year. Um, and it will be held at the Sports and Fitness Center at University of the Virgin Islands. Um, another thing that I'm very uh, proud about is this is the first time our foreign language department will be taking our students abroad. Carnival week, um, we have a group of students that will be going to France for a week. They will be in Paris for three days and then they will leave and tour the French countryside and also the French Riviera, which I uh, wholeheartedly endorse because it those type of experiences are life learning, life changing events. Absolutely. We have um, about 40 students going on our annual college tour in which these children go um, to the East Coast and they tour about 15 to 20 university campuses, the, um, Pennsylvania, New York, New Jersey, New Hampshire, Washington DC. They're moving around quite a bit. Then um, we have our marine class, which um, offers sailing and the opportunities to learn all the different aspects of the marine industry, okay. which brings together also our culinary arts because our students are learning uh, the catering aspect and the, that portion of the industry as well. We have advanced placement courses, uh, quite a number. In fact, yesterday, uh, Friday, we had a meeting with those parents we have tested all of our 10th and 11th graders for the ASFAB test, which is the Army Assessment of Vocational Aptitude. Not looking at that from the aspect of students going in the military, right. but to help the students assess what their interests are and what, where their skills could best be applied. So there's a lot going on. And the thing that um, I'm announcing to you and to the community is we will um, have up and running second semester our tilapia farm. Tell us about that. That sounds interesting. This is a project that has been in the making for almost three years. Okay. 
we purchased the aquaponics system, which is the tanks for mm -hmm. the fish, um, a little over two years ago. And because of the generosity of the community, particularly Celtic Therapeutics, we have now been able to prepare the site and uh, we will be setting up the aquaponics system and also the plant beds because the wastewater and the waste of the fish will then go into the plant beds which will um, feed and nourish them. So the students will be um, involved in the entire process, the entire cycle from the hatchlings to the fish growing and harvesting them and also the utilization of the water for the growing of the um, vegetables. Mm -hmm. We are hoping in due time that we'll be able to do some little Saturday things and the community will be able to come in. It will cross all of the content areas because we will be bringing in the science classes and the monitoring of the fish, the temperature of the water, the acidity of the water, um, the VI history classes and the Caribbean history will then come out and they will be able to apply this to their curriculum. And I might also add, we're very conscious of the uh, push in this community in regards to agriculture, and we're hoping to prepare students in that direction. Which is an element that's often forgotten, but so very well needed. I mean, right now, if you think about, I'm thinking maybe months from now, mm -hmm. where you fish, you, I mean, children can actually learn how to be entrepreneurs just based on this project that you have going on, how to market these tilapia fish, what does it entail to start your own business? How is it the importance of agriculture being filtered in through the school system to make that happen? I mean, sometimes we kind of focus on just simply the three R's and there's just so much more. The other aspect of that as well, uh, with the marine industry class, our small engines course, um, and now this component with the tilapia, is we have a tendency as educators to think that all of our children are college bound. Right. That is not necessarily the truth. Um, we have to provide avenues of interest for them. We have to give the drawing card to the student that will tell you outright, I'm not going to college. Mm -hmm. But we still have to let them know, we have to prepare you for the bigger world. Mm -hmm. And we want all of our children to be successful adults, lifelong learners, and very productive members of our community. So we are also creating what I consider non-traditional curriculum so that we can enhance and capture all of the students and bring them into the school. That may be the one or two children that normally would have dropped out, but because these programs are there, they will select to remain in school. We have to always give them an opportunity to find their niche so that they can thrive, and obviously you're doing something about that. Yes, we are. Um, another program that I'm very proud of, this is the first year that we're doing Junior Achievement. Okay. Um, and again, that is uh, another EDC company, Alpine Securities, mm -hmm. sponsoring that. Um, our students have decided that the corporation they're forming is an event planning and carrying out organization. It is called Eventus. Mm -hmm. And they did sponsor the first event, planned it very well, which was a teacher-student basketball game. And that was the highlight of the school Thursday. It was really rewarding. And I might add the teachers won. <laughs> did you play? Did you play? <laughs> no, I was the coach for the team, for the teachers. Actually, Ms. Leardham did more of the coaching than I did, one of the assistant principals. But uh, there's a lot of great things going on at Ken. A lot of great things. And as we come back, please stay tuned so that you can hear more about it. Thank you. There's some that will tell you there is no real evidence of gang problems in the U.S. Virgin Islands. There are some that want you to think that the violence we read about each day is isolated to a handful of teenagers and younger adults interested only in shooting and killing each other. To those people, we would like to say thank you. You're the reason we formed an organization called the Virgin Islands Anti-Gang Committee, focused on gang prevention and a safer community through targeted outreach, training, and education.